<laughs> even for my age, I think I'm getting more and more interested in the food. That's what I told you. Spend more time in the bed than in the kitchen. Every time when John Lennon came to town, that master is uh, uh, the Mandarin. Minced squab and lettuce cups, the signature dish of the Mandarin. She was born almost a hundred years ago in a China that no longer exists. Her privileged childhood was interrupted when the Japanese invaded and she was forced to flee, and then flee again when the communist revolution swept over China. But Cecilia Chang is a survivor, and in the 1950s, she sailed into San Francisco. Though she had never cooked a day in her life, she opened the Mandarin, an acclaimed restaurant that would revolutionize Chinese food in America. She mentored some of America's greatest chefs, the likes of Julia, James Beard, and Alice Waters. Now in her mid-90s, Cecilia is mentoring a new generation of San Francisco chefs and sharing her century of kitchen wisdom. Cecilia Chang has been breaking through the glass ceiling for her entire life, almost 100 years. Everybody tried to tell me, they said that really, it's a, you are in the tough business because you are a woman, you compete with a man. After one year, one year and a half, the, the business is still very slow. And then Herb Kane came. He mentioned next day in his column. And then everybody asked for, asked for a reservation. A lot of socialite from uh, Pacific Heights and Napa Hill started to come. That's how the business is getting better and better. That's all. Then a lot of famous people, opera stars, June Sutherland, senators, dying finest, and, and a lot of politicians, they all keep just coming, and the, the Jefferson airplanes, they're all my regular customer. Suddenly, my grandmother was a celebrity. In 1967, Cecilia took a huge risk, borrowing close to a million dollars to open the Mandarin in Ghirardelli Square. It was an elegant, serene, white tablecloth place that could comfortably seat 300 diners at a time. The Mandarin was certainly one of the most high-profile restaurants in San Francisco. I mean, it was beautiful. It's considered the best Chinese restaurant in America uh, at the time and for a long time. It felt like you were going into a whole other world. I mean, almost like into a temple of food. She really brought something new, some new flavors, a new a new kind of cooking to San Francisco, and it reached its apotheosis at the Mandarin in Ghirardelli Square. She had a impeccable memory of her guests, their, not only their names, but uh, you know their families and what they had last time. And uh, people remember her, because she would walk up in her Chinese uh, chongsam with her pearls, which is, I think, her favorite jewelry, and she had impeccable taste. And when she walked up to a table, she was able to command that uh, attention and they would just let her order and, and whatever Cecilia ordered and took care of the tip, touched the table, the tips would be better. So we're happy she was helping out. Cecilia was now a star and with her fame came celebrities of all stripes. Among them was Danny Kaye, a comedian and actor who was both big on TV and in the movies and who fancied himself a fine Chinese cook. He convinced my grandmother that Los Angeles needed a great Chinese restaurant, and in 1975, Cecilia and her son Philip opened the Mandarin in Beverly Hills. It was an instant hit and soon became a hangout for the famous and the infamous as well. 
We have a lot of uh, show people, show business people, rock singers, uh, models, fashion designers, uh, just just uh, uh, and the movie stars. Every time when John Lennon came to a town, that must stop is uh, uh, the Mandarin. Every Friday, Mel Brooks, Kenneth Bergen, every week. Also, I met our natural Loretta Young, Natalie Woods, William Holden, Elizabeth Taylor, just so many, so many. So one day, I was on the front desk and uh, saw a man uh, all well-dressed, and he said, my name is uh, Norman Mailer. I said, Norman Mailer, never heard of that. <laughs> and uh, so, so, then he said, I'm looking for the, the owner here, and her name is Cecilia Chen. So I said, this is she, I'm a Cecilia Chen. So he looked at me, he said, are you really Cecilia Chiang? I said, yes, I am. He said, I saw the owner here, she'd be gray hair and an old, older woman, <laughs> big, fat old woman. Tell us the story of the Gabor sister. Okay. So how, when I was working in Beverly Hills um, restaurant, so one day, here is uh, Mama Julie, Julie Gabor, brought uh, these three daughters in the restaurant. So I sh had a whole bunch of uh, menu I was holding. I showed them the table, so I put it in my room. So Mama Julie Gabor said, oh, are you the owner of the restaurant? I said, yes. He, 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 he looked at me, he said, oh, you got what a beautiful drapery now. Uh, I said, thank you very much. And then he looked at, give me your hand again. So I gave uh, her my hand again. She said, girls, look at this poor woman. Look at her hand. She said, that's what I told you. Spend more time in the bed than in the kitchen. <laughs> Then you became like the fashionable place, right? Yeah. And then everybody had to be, want to be seen and see and be seen inside the Mandarin, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we have presidents like presidents? Reagan, Reagan, Bush, uh -huh. and also Kennedy families. Did you did you feed Kennedy? Yeah, yeah. Did you meet him? They all came, and then all the rock star scenes like Alton John, Paul Newman came here, Woody Allen. They, they, they all have a cost account. Jack Nicholson is our regular. He loves uh, Jack Daniel Black, double, double shots on the rocks. Michael Ken, Scott Shrinker, strictly Scott Shrinker. Woody Allen's strictly just, uh, just uh, maybe seven up of, of Coke, never drink wine. Mel Brooks always bring his own bottle, always two bottles of red, red wine. He always brings his own bottle. And then you charge the cartridge, he was not very heavy. <laughs> like my grandmother, Nancy Oakes opened a restaurant in San Francisco that went on to become a legend. With views overlooking the Bay Bridge, Boulevard is a landmark in the Embarcadero, San Francisco's waterfront district. It began as a neighborhood place and morphed into the Bell Epic destination restaurant that it is today. One that has for the past 20 years been Zagat rated as the most popular in town. Everything in the kitchen at Boulevard is cooked to order. The food is a constantly updating version of California cuisine. American fare with locally sourced ingredients spiked with a few imports like Wagyu beef and chorizo that keeps the menu always new and interesting and the house always fully packed. 
Nancy began her career in the front of the house before finding her way into the kitchen. She was just getting her start in the business when the Mandarin was already in its heyday and Madame Chang was ruling the front of the house. It was a beautiful restaurant. Beautiful restaurant. Who designed that restaurant? Len Chen, a Chinese. Wow. It Actually, was... more, it more is my ideas. I said, I don't want gold, because most of the Chinese restaurants, you walk in, gold, red, dragon, yeah. and the <laughs> neon, neon lights, and also with the... Yeah, bad lighting. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> with the beautiful lighting. And the mirror, I said, I don't want all this. That's a big no-no. I just want to look like old temple. That was a big deal for us to get all dressed up and come to the Mandarin. It was the... So they, all these restaurants, you have to dress up. And the men have, have a tie mm -hmm. and a jacket, remember? Mm -hmm. And the ladies with the gloves, a little uh, pillbox hat. And with well, I didn't the do that. <laughs> Very fancy. <laughs> I was thinking about at a Mandarin. The um, you were the first one to ever do the Mongolian lamb. I remember you on, had on, on the barbecue. barbecue. Now that was really when it was special to to get to sit there. That's your the whole favorite dish. Uh, Rolled up uh, nuret. Right. Every time he came, he said, "You have to do it." <laughs> You've had a lot of uh, famous people. My favorite story is the, the mysterious long-haired people spending all the money on champagne. That's right. That's a, a Jefferson airplane. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you discover that that was who they were? I mean, did you know? I, I don't know who, who they are. They came a couple of times, and uh, I think the second time, somebody pointed to me. They said, Cecilia, do you know who they are? I said, no, I don't know. Just uh, a bunch of crazy kids with a beautiful woman. That's a grace a slick. slick. Yeah. Once they sit down, we want down Pernyang, two bottles, two bottles, we are thirsty. Then my waiter said, can they afford it? <laughs> <laughs> because nobody knows who they are. I said, you just serve whatever they ask for. You just serve. I said, my responsibility, if they cannot, uh, afforded to pay. Well, they were a big deal in San Francisco <laughs> at that time. The other customer told me about them. And they they come back? Were they? Oh, they keep coming back, oh. keep coming back, and uh, later become my good friend. You know, I think when you have a restaurant and you're a great host, and you make friends, I mean, that's everybody's fantasy about having a restaurant. But, you know, I think you've made that true. I mean... Yeah, later some become my... Good friend. So one of my favorite dishes that I had every time is the uh, squab with the lettuce cups. I think it's the most elegant presentation and is so flavorful. Mm -hmm. So the secret to all the flavor is the pigeon, but also... Also, you have a black mushroom and water chestnut and lap chong. So the, my favorite place to get the lap chong, I the couldn't get, chung. is in Chinatown, that place that's been there for a hundred years. Years, that's right. That's yeah. a famous for yeah. this lap chong. Then if you go to the store, you're kind of faced with a lot of strange choices if you can't make it, if you don't have that great store in Chinatown. So when we make the dish, um, I mm. want to learn all the secrets, but I also would like to have Dana come, who's my chef at, at Boulevard, Fun. so she can learn, share in the wisdom. Okay, uh, that would be great. Because you're giving us all this great wisdom yeah, we got to have. You know, it. all this, um, the Chinese for the prep work is, uh, takes a long time. Well, that's why I bring Dana. She does yeah. all the work yeah. anyway. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> you okay. You, you know, you just, this, you, you just have to dice it. Yeah. And the lap chong has the seasonings. Mm -hmm. You want to try well, this kind, too? Mm -hmm. This has a little more fat. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. it also That's has fine. That's, I good? think that's enough. Okay. All right. How big? Just dice it. Dice? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like fine dice? Fine, fine dice. All right. So, lap chong. Yeah. What part of China does this dish come from? This, so this is tradition. This actually is kind of my... my. Uh, is this your invention? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, because chicken is too common. Yes. That's how I started with the squab. I didn't know I can sell or not. And make such a big hit. Everybody loved it. 
Yeah. It's rich, but yet yeah. the lettuce leaf makes it light and... and yeah, the, the lettuce, because outside is ice cold, and inside is nice and crispy with, with all the different ingredients. Well, I'm very excited to try it with the squab, because I got to San Francisco after the Mandarin closed. Curled. And so I was never able to have the original, but I've had different variations. Uh, you you know, heard about that, I've about this about it, dish. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. And then the mushroom, is this chopped? Same thing? Uh, Diced fine? Yeah, the mash is supposed to. I also, think that's, you can chop go? a little more. Right, right, right. right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes uh, I, I feel like when I'm in the kitchen, doing the kitchen, very relaxing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I still love about it, is yeah. the transforming the ingredient. That's right. Is really pleasurable still. It changes the whole place, you know. Yeah. And then nobody will bother you, you just do your own things. Yeah, they stay away so they don't have to help, I know. Yeah. <laughs> You haven't gotten tired of food or thinking no, about no. food or... No. I know. Even for my age, I think I'm getting more and more interested in the food because right now the variety we get, especially in San Francisco, you can get all the ingredients. I think getting yeah. the smaller farmers, having them mm. so close, and when you ask them to grow something. I, uh, like Nancy, I think that's uh, fine enough. Fine enough, okay. Yeah. But before you get the, uh, get the squab, that's also nice and fat. Yeah, this is a really good one. Um, really? The yeah. squab has a big, wonderful flavor. Seldom you get uh, this size. So you can really get a lot of meat yeah. out of it. Well, I want to make plenty so that yeah. we all have something to to enjoy. It's, yeah, it's, that's wonderful. Even the skin, you can chop it. I'm very excited yeah. to put the skin in. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one of the secrets, right? Mm -hmm, that's right. And then, you know, this meat is different with um, chicken meat. This has a slightly the gamey flavor. That's what's so nice about it. That's what the chicken, you don't get that flavor. I think it's the most delicious bird, mm -hmm. really, and everybody, I don't know, they're a little afraid of it, which is too bad, because yeah, it's very it's flavorful. So this is the fresh water chestnut, which we found. And then these need to be diced, right? Yes, not too, too fine, because it gets shrink. A few more? Maybe, uh, I think maybe one more. Okay. Yeah. Separate because you put that last. The very last, so it stays. Yeah, crisp. because that gets watery. Do they actually grow in the water? They yes, have, yes, bold yes, plants yes, and yes, then... yes. That's right. Okay. It, but see, northern China is a lot of land, and also we don't have a river or lake or anything like that in northern Ch China. Do you want me to chop this a little more? We'll more, 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 more. Just like Italian food, Chinese food is very regional and really changes throughout right. the country. And also, because China is uh, such a big country, different uh, province, they speak their local language. The Mandarin only in Beijing in the old days, but now become a universal language. So no matter where you go, travel in China, if you speak Mandarin, people understand you, you know. All right, more? That's perfect. And the ginger, what do I do with the ginger? The ginger, you also rinse it, actually. Okay. That's enough. Enough, stop, okay. I love ginger. <laughs> so good for you, you know? Yeah, then you just shred it. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna try that with the cleaver? Or? Mm -hmm. Seems like that would be the right tool here. I've got the sweetheart cleaver. A, a little mini cleaver. Yeah, I know, it's cute. It's handmade. <laughs> a little hard. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, just show me the... Uh, the... You just, you just, just... <laughs> All right. You have to leave a little bit for me to finish. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. you roll, I it, roll it? it back over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold this one. Right, right. Oh, it's kind of like making dough. Finer? A little more. A little bit more? Okay. You sure you don't want to exercise? Some? Oh, I'll be happy to. Okay. I see. If you just keep going in different directions, you eventually get everything. 
Very efficient. Wow, that works really well. You don't need to get out the food processor and the meat grinder and all that. Here. What do you think? Good? Oh, that's fine. Okay. All right, so your secret tip, it looks like it's loosening up in the ice water. Yeah, ice water, they open. Yeah, you're See right, that? yeah. See, that's the trick. Yeah, this one particularly, this one really opened up. It's like puffing. Oh, and then you shape it with the scissors. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You have that plate. I'm gonna get a plate, a nice big plate. All right, now I'm getting hungry. Okay, I think we got everything chopped up, sure. all measured out. We're ready to go to the stove and put the dish together, Let's right? do it. Okay, let's do right. it. Right. And now, now you, you, when you see the smoke is up, mm -hmm. put it right in. All of it? Yeah, all of it. Wow. Be careful, be careful. I got a scallion. The okay. scallion, you chop. See the color? Beautiful. Okay. And then you put this ginger. The ginger. Okay. Uh, my because favorite. Because this is lap raw. Yeah, lap Because this is raw. You want the... Oh boy, you are good. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the soy sauce? The soy sauce. Okay. The first about two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. See how nice and noise? This is the, the wine. The shaoxing. The shaoxing. A black mushroom. You know why you put this step by step? Because the salt makes it really salty. So you don't oh. want to put right in it. I've noticed that about mushrooms. Like if you put yeah. it with vinegar, it takes it right away. Right away. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the fire all opened up. See this? See, you can still see the color. Beautiful. And uh, this is a... Uh, yeah, oyster sauce? I don't use any starch or any coal, oh, but this is... It helps kind to of thicken it. It yeah. binds it together. It yeah. gets together. Yeah. And you get a new flavor. And uh, this is water chestnut, the last thing. Then it needs oh. a crunch. So now we taste it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, delicious. You can taste every single bite. You can tell everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. That's what I mean. No, the texture is incredible. No. Should we this, put it in a bowl and then the pine nuts on top? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go get the lettuce leaves ready. Oh boy, this smells fantastic. That's beautiful. All right, boss lady, how many pine nuts do we put on here? You just sprinkle. Just go for it? Yeah, you just sprinkle whenever you want. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Well, you never and see this dish anymore. No, I see that's fine. That's, that's good? OK. Mm -hmm. All right. You hold like this. For the chef. Ooh, thank you. You can, you can tell what's inside. The texture. Thank you. Wow. Mm. Boy, yeah. this is everything I remember and more. Even you can see the water chestnut white color and the lap chum is red color. It's still there. And the That's why different. you cannot put everything at the same time together. That's the tricky about Chinese cooking. Step by step, you cannot say strong cut corners. No, no, won't taste right. So, as an appetizer. I mean, this is dinner. Thing. I'm very happy here. Mm, this is very so good. You have been such an inspiration. I mean, first as a woman restaurateur, running a successful and noteworthy restaurant where they got a lot of attention and was considered 
top tier in San Francisco, which is not easy because there's a lot of competition. But your style, your elegance, and the way that you have always just been in command of your business and the people who work for you, I know it is not easy. But also just your openness and the way that you've embraced the food community and the way that you bring us together. I, I, you mean absolutely the world to me and you've always been just a complete role model.